The Path to Salvation, Part 2, Chapter 3 The Action of Divine Grace We have said that the sinner is like a person who is sunk in a deep slumber, just as a person who is fast asleep will not stir and get up on his own in spite of approaching danger unless someone comes and rouses him. So will the person who is sunk in the slumber of sin not come to his senses and awaken unless divine grace comes to his aid. By the boundless mercy of God, this grace is prepared for everyone, approaches everyone in turn, and calls out clearly to each, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ephesians 5.14 this comparison of sinners with sleepers provides a starting point for a thorough examination of their conversion to God. For example, a sleeper awakens, gets up, and gets ready to go to work. A sinner who turns to God and repents is roused from the lullaby of sinfulness, reaches a decision to change, he gets up, and, at last, puts on strength for his new life in the mysteries of repentance and holy communion, preparation for work. These moments are described in the parable of the prodigal son in this way. When he came to himself, means he has come to his senses. I will arise and go, indicates he has decided to cease his former life. I have sinned, his repentance, and his father clothes him, forgiveness and absolution from sins and prepares him a meal, Holy Communion. Thus, there are three stages in the conversion of sinners to God. One, arousal from the slumber of sin. Two, reaching the decision to give up sin and devote oneself to pleasing God. Three, vestment with power from on high for doing this in the mysteries of repentance and communion. Chapter 4 Awakening the Sinner from the Sleep of Sin The awakening of the sinner is that act of divine grace in his heart, the consequence of which he, as one awakened from sleep, sees his sinfulness, senses the danger of his situation, begins to fear for himself and to care about deliverance from his misfortune and salvation. Previously, he was like a blind man, unfeeling and uncaring with regard to salvation. Now he sees, senses, and cares. However, this is still not change. It is only the opportunity for change and the call for it. Grace is only telling the sinner at this point, See what you have gotten into. Look, then. Take measures for salvation. It merely removes him from the customary bonds and sets him beyond them, thereby giving him the opportunity to choose a completely new life and find his place in it. If he takes advantage of this, it is to his benefit. If he does not, he will be cast again into the very same sleep in the very same abyss of destruction. This divine grace is achieved by exposing to the consciousness and feeling the insignificance and shame of that to which a person is devoted and values so highly, just as the word of God pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, Hebrews 4.12, so does grace pierce to the division of the heart and sin and breaks down their unlawful alliance and relationship. We saw how the sinner with his entire being falls into a realm where there are principles, ideas, opinions, rules, customs, pleasures, and ways that are completely incompatible with the true spiritual life for which man is intended. Once he has fallen into this place, he is not there in isolation or detachment. Instead, he is permeated by everything, mingles with everything. He is completely immersed in it. Thus, it is only natural that he not know or think about its incompatibility with spiritual life, and he has no kind of sympathy towards spiritual life. 
the spiritual realm is completely closed off to him. It is obvious from this that the door to conversion may be opened only under the condition that the spiritual way of life be revealed to the sinner's consciousness in its full light, and not merely revealed, but that it touch the heart, that the sinful way of life be discredited, rejected, and destroyed. This also takes place in the presence of consciousness and feeling. Only then can the care arise to abandon the old ways and begin the new. All this is accomplished in the single act of the sinner's arousal by grace. In its course of action, the arousing divine grace is always connected not only with the bonds in which the sinner is held, but also with the overall condition of the sinner. In this latter regard, one must above all keep in mind the difference in the way the action of grace appears when it acts on those who have never been aroused, and when it acts on those who have previously experienced such arousal. For someone who has never experienced spiritual awakening before, it is given to him freely, like some all-encompassing preliminary or summoning grace. Nothing is required from the person beforehand because he has a completely different orientation. However, grace is not freely given to the person who has already experienced spiritual arousal, who knows and senses what life in Christ is, and who has fallen into sin again. He must give something himself first. He must still be worthy and beseech. It is not enough merely to wish, he must work on himself in order to attract spiritual arousal by grace. Such a person, in recollecting his previous sojourn in the virtuous Christian way, often desires it again, but has no power over himself. He would like to turn over a new leaf, but is unable to gain self-mastery and conquer himself. He has abandoned himself to helpless despair because he previously abandoned the gift and reproached and trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Hebrews 10.29 Now he is allowed to perceive that this power of grace is so great that it will not be granted immediately. Seek and labor, and learn to appreciate how difficult it is to acquire. Such a person is in a somewhat agonizing condition. He thirsts, but is not given drink, hungers, but is not fed, seeks, but does not find, exerts himself, but does not receive. Sometimes a person is left in this condition for a very long time, to the point where he feels divine reproach, as if God has forgotten him, turned away and betrayed his promise. But he feels like the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, but which bears thorns and briars. Hebrews 6, 7-8 But this slow touching of grace to the heart of the seeker is only a trial. He goes through the period of trial, and thinks to his labors and agonizing search, the spirit of arousal once again descends on him as it descends on others as a gift. This course of action of salvific grace shows us two things. First, the special actions of divine grace in arousing the sinner. Second, the usual way of acquiring the gift of arousing grace.